Hello friends, welcome back to a new history run episode. Today we'll be running past other historical sites in Bucharest, the capital of Romania. If you're here and you've seen some of my other videos and you haven't subscribed yet, I think it's time to do it. It costs nothing, just press subscribe, press the bell to see when I post something new and we can continue. Now that we're done with the formalities, let's enjoy a nice run through Bucharest. Also, watching more of this clip, you promote this kind of content. By closing it immediately after leaving a comment, you do a lot of damage to the channel. Hoping you won't do that, thank you very much. I was wondering why the frisbee was getting bigger. Then it hit me. <laughs> the Dimbovitsa River flows through the capital for 22 kilometers. Along the shores of the Dimbovitsa River there are many terraces and restaurants. At sunset, the reddish-orange color is reflected in the river water and the view is truly magical. That's why the Dimbovitsa River is part of the perfect list of places to visit in the evening in Bucharest. Although it is the main source of water supplying Bucharest, the river has raised various problems over the years, due to hydrological phenomena resulting from the crossing of the city, flooding, swamping. As a result of these phenomena, the course of the river has undergone a series of improvements, and today its entire course is canalized. At the crossing through the municipality of Bucharest, the river was dammed to form the Lake of the Mill. Downstream of this lake, the river has been canalized along the entire stretch of its course through the capital. At one point, in 1934, the Dimbovitsa was partially covered with concrete plates to mask it. Fifty years later, during the communist regime, the planking would be removed, the river bed redeveloped and the lake of the mill and the metro built. At the time, the famous joke circulated, where does the Danube flow? Into the Black Sea. And where does the Dimbovitsa flow? Into the metro. <laughs> The National Museum of Romanian History is the most important museum of the Romanian state. It holds objects of historical value discovered on the current territory of Romania from prehistoric times to the contemporary period. Construction work on the new building began in 1894, when King Carol I of Romania laid the foundation stone of the Post Palace in a ceremony attended by high-ranking Romanian officials. Inspired by the Post Office building in Geneva, built in neoclassical style, the Post Office Palace was inaugurated in 1900. The facade of the building has steps running the length of the building, and at the end of the steps is a portico supported by ten columns. During the occupation of Bucharest during the First World War, 1916-1918, the German Communications Center, Telegraph, Telephone Exchange and Post Office, operated here. The palace functioned in an administrative role until 1970. Then the building became National Museum of Romanian History, with the aim of illustrating the cultural evolutions recorded throughout all historical eras in the geographical space of today's Romania. The old center of the capital was a meeting place for merchants from all over the world during the interwar period. Every street, every building represents a piece of history. Buildings decorated with various sculptural techniques are transformed into restaurants and clubs and terraces all ready to welcome partygoers, lovers of various music and dancing. The Villa Cross Passage is shaped like an elongated horseshoe that connects Victory Way with Lipscani and Eugen Carada streets. The yellowish glass roof, stained glass windows and sumptuous statues at the entrance are also worth a visit. The passageway is now home to restaurants and cafes, giving a new lease of life to this area of Bucharest. What do Alexander the Great and Winnie the Pooh have in common? Same middle name. <laughs> Did you hear how the zombie bodybuilder hurt his back? He was deadlifting. <laughs> the old town of Bucharest is known mostly for its restaurants, pubs and nightlife. Even if you're not interested in them, one of the restaurants here deserves your attention, the famous beer cart. Visit it, not necessarily because of the food served here, but because of the rich history and unique architecture. The building dates back to 1898, having served as a brewery, and the ground floor is decorated with paintings, stained glass, mosaics and carved paneling. Don't miss the view from here of the, the Palace of the House of Deposits, Consignments and Economy, it's worth a photo. 
On the same street you'll also find the Stavropolios church, I know, it's a bit hard to pronounce, that's because it inherited the name of the place where the Greek abbot who built it was a metropolitan. The Stavropolios church dates back to 1724 and was built in the courtyard of an inn, as was the custom of the time. Even though it's a small church and the courtyard is the same, it's an extremely well-kept place where you can admire hundreds of years old murals. Stavropolios Church is an Orthodox church, built in the Bran Kavanesque style, in the center of Bucharest and is included in the list of historical monuments in Romania. Although small in size, the church has monumentality, being an architectural space specific to the Byzantine tradition. Through its carved decoration and ornamental motifs it expresses a Baroque sensibility and an Oriental taste. Here you can see altar icons, prayer icons, hearth and processional icons on wood and glass. What did the left eye say to the right eye? Between you and me, something smells. <laughs> The story of Manukin begins in 1806, when it rose on the lands of Bukur. Being built like no other inn of its time, it stood out from other inns by its unique architecture. Its founder was Manuk Marzion, better known as Manuk Bay. A famous merchant, diplomat and innkeeper, Manuk was considered at that time as one of the wealthiest innkeepers in the Balkans. Using his wealth and influence as a merchant, Manuk began to build his diplomatic fame in the early 1800s. He became advisor to the Turks, and in 1808 he was appointed by the Sultan Bey of Moldavia. Eventually he also became an intermediary between the Russian and Turkish armies, and the peace that both the Turks and the Russians wanted depended largely on Manuk Bey. The peace of 1812 is a defining moment for the Han's reputation. Peace negotiations are held in Manuk's in itself. The treaty is signed on the 16th of May 1812, and will put an end to the Russo-Turkish War, while delimiting sovereignty over the territories disputed by the two powers. Manuk died in 1818. At the beginning of the 1900s, the inn began to host not only travelers, during the period when it was called Hotel Darcia, but also plays, shows and masked balls, passions of the Bucharest youth of the time. Hotel Darcia was also the place of meetings of local political parties in the years before and around the First World War. The intellectual elite of the time gathered here to plan the union of Romania with Transylvania and Bukovina and the entry into the war. With considerable investment and renovation efforts on the part of the Conte Cusino family heirs, Manuk's Inn, one of the most famous 19th century landmarks in the capital, has come to life again, carrying with it the history of more than 200 years. The monument appeared in 1960 and was a gift from the municipality of Rome on the occasion of the 40th anniversary of the coronation of King Carol I as ruler of Romania. Before 2010, the statue of the she-wolf and her cubs was located in the Roman Square. In 2010, after many other moves around the city, following a discussion between the Mayor General of the capital, and the Italian Ambassador, who decided to place the statue in front of the Bucharest store, in the old center. We should also know that the statue is a copy of the one in Rome, called Lupa Capitolina. Lupa Capitolina is the legendary she-wolf that suckled Romulus and Remus, the traditional founders of Rome. Since the 18th century, scientists have struggled to identify the origins of Rome's symbolic statue. Two cows are grazing in a field. One cow says to the other, you ever worry about that mad cow disease? The other cow says, why would I care? I'm a helicopter. <laughs> the oldest hospital in Bucharest, still functioning today, is named after Mihail Conticuzino. He is the one who founded the Colti Hospital on the 14th of December 1704. Fascinated by the Italian model of the Ospedale di Lazaro e Medicanti in Venice, which at the time was one of the most modern medical institutions in the world, Mihail Conticuzino commissioned the construction of a hospice. He remained on watch at Colti even after his death. His statue, made of Carrara marble by the German-born Romanian sculptor Karl Stork, has stood in front of the hospital since 1869. The Colti Hospital building also housed the tallest building since 1715, the Colti Tower. At that time the saying had also appeared, as tall as the Colts Tower, which people used to make various comparisons. The tower was designed by the Dutch architect Joseph Schiffler. The tower was over 50 meters high and was considered by a Greek monk to be one of the most imposing European monuments. It compares with the Great Bell Tower in Petersburg, the Church of San Marco in Venice and the Lavrapisurska Monastery in Kiev. It also served as a fire pit. In 1802 it was damaged by an earthquake and in 1888 it was demolished. 
In 1739, Coltsy burned down in a fire, but rose again from its ashes. The buildings were rebuilt until 1888. After being rebuilt, the institution expanded its activities, setting up new departments and clinics. What do you call a bee that can't make up its mind? A maybe. <laughs> If you are caught in the evening in Bucharest and you have a clear sky, you must go and admire the stars at the Astronomical Observatory, here you will also learn about our solar system, constellations and galaxies, so you will certainly have something to tell about your visit to Bucharest. The observatory building is also interesting, being built in the shape of a ship, with an observatory dome, here's what Admiral Vosila Ursinu says about it. I built my house in the shape of a yacht, with an observatory dome, so that when I make observations with the telescope, I have the feeling that I am floating on the sea. Hear about the new restaurant called Karma? There's no menu, you get what you deserve. <laughs> The Triumphal Arch is a monument located in the northern part of Bucharest. The monument, designed by Petro Rontonescu, was built between 1921 to 1922, renovated between 1935 to 1936, and renovated again since 2014. It commemorates Romania's victory in World War I. The Arc de Triomphe is one of the monuments commemorating Romania's participation in the First World War on the side of the Allies, at the end of which almost all the territories inhabited by Romanians were united for the first time. The Arc de Triomphe is not the first monument of its kind erected in the Romanian capital, and was built after the model of the Great Arc de Triomphe in Paris. The inauguration ceremony took place on 1 December 1936, the 18th anniversary of the Union of Transylvania with Romania. The moment was marked by the participation of King Charles II, his mother Queen Mary, Crown Prince Michael, members of the Romanian government and many honored guests from home and abroad. After the Communists came to power in Romania, the Arc de Triomphe was mutilated by removing the two texts of King Ferdinand's proclamations to the country on the occasion of Romania's entry into the War of Unification and the coronation in Alba Iulia in 1922. The effigies of King Ferdinand the Conqueror and Queen Mary, made by the sculptor Alexandru Kalinescu, were also removed and destroyed, replaced by two large stone flowers. After 1989, the stone flowers were taken down, and two bronze medallions depicting the faces of King Ferdinand and Queen Mary were mounted, replacing the original ones, but the inscriptions on the side panels still remained hammered. from the herd. 